when we made our first feature, we actually had, uh, we sort of established a rule that we could argue as long well, as we... we established this rule <laughs> on Collect All Four. Oh, to, well, anyway. On our first short. But that was a short, so it was <laughs> yeah, only a weekend, yeah. and that was, you know, but yeah. on a feature, it was like a much pro prolonged period of shooting. So we just said we could argue so long as we both recognized that each of us was coming from the same place, which was to make the best movie possible. Because mm -hmm. that's always the, the, the trap of, you know, when you're married and you have an argument, is it quickly turns into just, like, bitter disputes about the fact that so-and-so didn't put their towel away, like, nine days ago. You know, that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. as the, we just wanted to keep it, like... Because to me, creativity comes from conflict and oppositional ideas. Yeah. And just, like, that, you know, one brain plus another can create something that neither could con conceive of individually. Yeah. Um, so that's where I think it works. And we just need to make sure that we keep the arguments professional and not personal. Yeah, that's not to say that we don't have lots and lots of arguments, because we do. But um, And I don't recommend every married couple do this, because not, not everybody has uh, a, rela a relationship that that can work. Um, but for us, like too, we, we kind of have, we have different brains, but also the same brain. So where I tend to be more on um, production side of, as far as scheduling, AD, um, logistics, efficiencies, those sorts of things. And Chris tends to be a little bit more to the um, gear side, you know, with the DP and gaffing and lighting and, and those sorts of things. And then we kind of cross over with the actors and rehearsing and, so it just, it just makes it so that on set we kind of have our different things, but we also have our similar things that we come together on. So it really does, we, we have each, we each have things that are kind of our own, and then we have our things that we come together for. And so it really, I don't know how people do it with, without having two directors. I mean, they do, they just don't credit their AD as a, as a director or their, or their, produ DP, or, or or their producer, producer or, or whoever, yeah. Yeah, I mean, every director has a partnership, a close collaborative partnership. We just tend to... We just have it, you know, both in the direction, and then we can able to bring someone else into that, you know, by having DP and producers. So, yeah. So, yeah. long answer. So the divvying up of kind of the roles is that something that came from sort of, well, I'm good at this and you're good at that, or was mm -hmm. it a conscious decision? Was mm -hmm. it organic? Uh, when we met, um, so we met we met when Chris was in film school, and I was a business major. So I have a background in management, people management, um, that sort of thing. When I first met Chris and I first started coming to film sets, because it wasn't like I knew that film was my career. I originally went to school for music and then changed to business. So I always had, I wanted to do film scores. It was originally what I went to school for. So I always had a, a love for movies, but I didn't know that that, it, that was my calling at that time. So when I first arrived on, a, on the first film set in college, I was like, no one around here knows how to manage people or manage time or manage anything. And I was like, you guys need people who understand how to run a business. And uh, so then I started, I started helping out producing things. I started yeah. helping out logistic wise and, and getting things done. And so uh, early on in our career, I was always the producer, Chris was the director. Um, well, I, you know, I, I forget, I think it may have, well, this is gonna sound pretentious as shit, but I think it was Nietzsche who said that, you know, to be a truly prolific creator, you have to have equal parts Dionysian and, uh, Apollinian yeah. um, personality traits, so you have to have like the creative orgy and the organizational part, because if you have nothing but creativity, then you'll never get anything done, and if you have nothing but organization, you'll never have anything to make, um, and I think that we kind of have that yin and yang a little yeah. bit between us. Yeah, and then, and then when, um, and then we always, we didn't realize it until looking back, but even though we, we credit ourselves as producer-director, we were always co-directing. Yeah. Um, we were always co-collaborating. I was always helping with the writing process. I was always helping with the everything. Mm -hmm. um, and so we just decided to actually give ourselves credit. Yeah. So. Well, there's even, I mean, you could even ask the question of like, what, what is the, it, there's one job on a film set that if they don't show up every day, the film will still get made. And that is the director. I yeah. mean, like, <laughs> you know, so it's almost, I, I don't know. It's just funny that like there's, you know, the auteur theory would state that, you know, that there's a singular vision behind every movie. And I, I don't think that's true because it is more collaborative and, um, yeah. So, I mean, to me, the co-directing aspect of it doesn't seem as foreign as it may to others. Yeah. And that's like... Plane. Hold for plan. <laughs> and as an auteurist, I have to then fight you. Right, yes. To the death. Do it. <laughs> me and Godard will take you down. Yeah, exactly.